I'm sitting here in Toronto at the Collision Conference with Paul Adel from NGP Capital, and thanks, Paul, for having the time to, to speak to us. Sure, it's my so, pleasure. Uh, let's start with a basic question. This is a huge conference, 25,000 people. Why are we, you here, and, and what are you expecting from that conference? Well, they, Collision does a great job with these conferences. Uh, they are large, they bring together a wide variety of people, and yet they are able to create a sense of intimacy at the same yeah. time. Uh, we have the ability to have uh, many conversations, but have quality conversations at the same time. That's a good thing. So I think why we ask you to have an interview is we, have, we, we, we share a joint basic uh, philosophy of providing trust. Sure. And, and based on trust. So we as Brightline, as PMI, we are trying to establish trust in project managers for business, for startups, for everybody. But you as a, as a venture capitalist, you know, you are also building on trust. Can you a little bit share what, what trust means to your business? The way we think about trust is it, it gives us the license to operate. It's the, uh, uh, the confidence to be able to get things done. Uh, when trust breaks down, the ability to do business breaks down as well. And uh, so we, we have a legal system that helps enforce or provide trust, yeah. but uh, that I think is a, a fundamental and, and, and not a very good baseline to work from. You, you, we, we, we talk a lot about doing the right thing. And we think of that as a higher ethical standard than what is required from a legal point of view. That's right. So there's a difference between uh, legal regulations and, and the, the, the ethical values you, you share. That's right? right. Like honesty, like respect, like responsibility and, and this kind of stuff. So when you are um, entering and in a discussion with, with uh, startup founders and you try to, to see if you can trust them to, to deliver right. what they promise, um, how do you judge? So what is, is? Do you look at the people in person? Do you do you or do, do you just look at data? We we look at their background, uh, and we we live in a a more open environment today where data is available, and uh, you can you can see on a variety of different sources the uh, you know how they operate. Uh, we we look at reputation before we invest in. In anyone, we will do extensive background checking, and uh, yeah. so, uh, and we're, we're only going to invest in people that we trust. Okay, but it's the individual you're looking at, you know, the the, the one who comes to you with the business case. So if it goes further, you know, if there's a business plan for two, three, four years, you look at them again, and so. How, how do you advise them or, or what do you look at uh, how the business is, is developing? Are they hiring the right, the right people? Is that something you're looking at? How they are building their, their core team? I've, I've done a fair amount of work on good governance and we believe oh, yeah. that governance from a, a board perspective, uh, it uh, doesn't create companies, uh, but it can destroy companies. And okay. so we believe that a culture of transparency a, uh, having open dialogues, having good people around the table uh, is, is very important in, in creating a company that can scale. Okay. Yeah, I, I hear, you know, from what you said about the ethical standards that should right. be there and the culture, I, I feel that you're saying, uh, okay, culture is, is the most important thing uh, that should be installed in these companies, That's right? right? It is a very important thing. I think it's, a culture is, underestimated, underappreciated. Yeah. Uh, from a technology point of view, we tend to think of barriers to entry yeah. as being technology-based and perhaps business model-based, but actually culture is the uh, most effective and, and hardest uh, competitive feature to complicate, uh, if you, uh, to replicate, because if, if you have a, a strong culture, it's something that can promote effective operations, but it's not something that's readily, readily visible or could be replicated from the outside in. Right, right. Can you give me a last advice on, on, on how you advise companies, uh, what they should do about culture? You know, should they bring in other people who advise them, consultants, or should they try to build it from, from, from their own team? Culture needs to start with the founder. Uh, and and uh, so a lot of it depends on the openness 
the transparency of the, the founder. And, and then it, there are systems that can support that. Okay. Um, a, a good board culture can do that. A good reporting culture uh, does that. The, the openness and the willingness to uh, seek advice, to take advice, uh, then leads to wanting to bring in uh, good people around you, whether they're members of your team or the advisors. Uh, all of that comes into building a, a culture of trust and, and ultimately scalability of the business. It's interesting. So we are at a technology conference, but we are talking about the human factor. That's right. Basically, it's interesting. Yes. So thank you very much for that uh, conversation. Paul. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yes.